Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We continue our examination through the book of Ephesians. We're actually in the home stretch right now of Ephesians. Uh, we're going to begin with the sixth chapter today. And you'll remember that uh, we're being told how we are to walk the walk we talk, how we're to live out this life of faith. First three chapters tell us who we are in the Lord. And the balance of the book, the last three chapters, show us literally how to live this life out. And so um, in the midst of that, we found out that we as believers are all one in Christ. Okay, there's one body, one hope, one faith, one baptism, one Lord. And in living that out, that we are to honor one another, that we are to walk in humility before one another, that we're actually be subject to one another, as one translation says. And so in the midst of that, he says, uh, each one of you be subject, be submissive to one another. Wives, to your husband. Husbands, love your wives. Then, beginning of chapter 6, he picks up with the children. Verse 1 says this, Children. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So there's a commandment right here. He's telling the children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. You know, there's no uh, uh, qualification, quantification of who children are. Is this something that you do until you reach an age that some governmental entity has determined to be adulthood? Or is this something that you do all through your life? And I think it's something you do all through your life. Uh, but it does have the caveat if your parents are encouraging you to do something that goes against the word of the Lord, then you don't do it. I find it interesting. Obey your children, uh, parents in the Lord, for this is right. Does that mean that if your parents are not in the Lord, that you don't have to obey them? <laughs> well, no, because the next verse is going to talk about honoring, okay, honoring father and mother. But I think it does give insight that, you can be a believer and your parents are not believers, so you may not be able to obey them in everything they do. Primary among it is rejection, okay, rejection of the Lord himself. You never want to do that, you know. If you're a believer, you haven't done that. And so he's saying, obey your parents in the Lord. Then it's also the understanding that if your parents are in the Lord, if they are believers, boy, you really need to obey them. For this is right. They're going to guard you. They're going to direct you. They're going to guide you in the path and the way of righteousness. Then verse 2, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. And that's a quote from the Old Testament. And so sometimes people want to treat this as if it's, well, if I honor my father and my mother when I'm young, then I'm guaranteed to uh, have a long life. And then, of course, they'll come and try to extrapolate a man-made corollary to that, that if someone dies young, if someone dies young, well, they must not have honored their father and their mother. No, 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 none of that foolishness, nothing like that. What he's saying, you honor your father and mother. And he's reminding them, this is the first commandment with a promise. There's a promise with it. So that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. And so the idea is that things will go well if you obey your parents in the Lord, you will learn the way of righteousness. You will learn the way of holiness. You will learn uh, how we should act and behave and how we should live as believers. This is what you're going to learn from your parents. And so it will go well with you and that you may live long on the earth. And just look at the folks who, uh, who don't do this kind of thing. Okay? If for no other reason, if they're caught up in uh, alcoholism or drugs or um, illegal lifestyles or whatever it may be, do they not die younger because of the impact that that type of lifestyle has upon their physical body? So that's what he's talking about. He's saying, honor your father and mother, okay? Then the last verse we'll look at today, he picks up a, uh, an idea uh, to communicate to the fathers in this middle of this honoring, you know, the children obeying and all this. He says, Father, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So I think that gives us insight to the whole thing of honoring your father. 
that we are to bring the children up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Okay? What the Lord is saying. And he says, do not provoke your children to anger. Colossians, in Colossians, Paul says a similar type of thing. And, uh, you know, sometimes we do that and we don't intend to. Okay? You know, you'll be clowning around, you'll be doing this, you'll be doing that, having a lot of fun. And all of a sudden, it crosses a line. And every parent has had some experience like that. It will cross a line and all of a sudden you realize, wait a minute, I have now provoked them to anger. Okay? This, what we thought was just sort of fleshly teasing and having fun, has become serious and is having an, an, an entirely different type of impact on the situation right here. And he's saying, fathers, don't do this. Fathers, don't provoke your children to anger. What are we to do? We're to bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Not the discipline of the man, of man, not instruction of man, but the instruction of the Lord. I think our families would be entirely different, folks, if we were to do this. Sadly, what fathers do and what the world actually uh, encourages is that fathers abdicate their roles and responsibility. They turn to institutions. They turn to governmental institutions, uh, public schools, for instance, or uh, the police. Or they'll turn to religious institutions, religious organizations and churches and things like that. Then, rather than a discipline and inst instruction in the Lord, they let somebody else discipline their children and raise up their children. Why do they do that? I think, I think it's a generational attack of the evil one that, that men have bought into, that they're not adequate, that they're not worthy. And, of course, they're going to be defensive and they're going to be uh, uh, sort of blustery about it, that type of thing, you know. And so the Lord is just telling us something out here. He says, you know what? Fathers, love your wives. Love your wives and don't provoke your children to anger. If you do this and if you bring them up in the discipline of the Lord, then guess what? The children will obey their parents in the Lord. They will realize this is the right thing, and it will carry on from generation to generation. Well, again, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you next time.